Looking at the enormous aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, one can't help but wonder, how does this huge ship not topple over? This question becomes even more pressing when you observe the ship from the front. An arrow-shaped hull juts out of the water, expanding and rising up like an upside-down pyramid. The design makes it appear that the ship could tip over at any moment. But it gets more intriguing. The USS Gerald R. Ford, America's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier, isn't just a massive inverted pyramid. On one side, the flight deck is loaded with planes, some of which weigh several tons each. So how does this 100,000 ton block of metal manage to stay upright? Or are the sailors of this enormous ship playing a dangerous game with gravity and the sea? Let's break it down by starting with a simpler question. Why doesn't a ship sink, even if it weighs tens or hundreds of thousands of tons? If you throw a hammer or a wrench into the water, you'll watch them quickly sink to the bottom. But take something like a rubber ball, stick it underwater, and it pops right back up to the surface. What's the difference? It all comes down to a force called Archimedes' principle. This principle states that the upward buoyant force exerted on a body submerged in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid that the body displaces. Simply put, if the weight of the object is less than the weight of the water it displaces, the object floats. So what about the steel, multi-decked, missile-loaded USS Gerald R. Ford? How does it stay afloat? As it turns out, despite all the planes, missiles, fuel, and equipment on board, the average density of the aircraft carrier is lower than that of water. Let's do the math. The total volume of an aircraft carrier up to its top deck is approximately 1,300,000 cubic meters or 46 million cubic feet. The maximum weight of the aircraft carrier, along with its crew, aircraft, fuel, and supplies, comes out to around 112 million kilograms, or 247 million pounds. By dividing the mass by the volume, we find that the average density of the USS Gerald R. Ford is around 86 kilograms per cubic meter, or 5.4 pounds per cubic foot. For comparison, the density of wood is typically between 550 to 700 kilograms per cubic meter, depending on the species. This means that the density of an aircraft carrier is almost 10 times less than that of wood, which explains why it floats so high above the waterline. But then comes the next question. Why doesn't it tip over? The buoyant force that keeps the ship afloat is applied at the center of the submerged portion of the hull, a point called the center of buoyancy. If the ship tilts, this center shifts along a curve. The intersection of the ship's vertical axis and the vector of this buoyant force is called the metacenter. The secret to the ship's stability lies in the relationship between the center of gravity and the metacenter. If the ship's center of gravity lies below the metacenter, the ship is stable. If it's above, the ship could capsize. The greater the distance between the center of gravity and the metacenter, the more stable the ship becomes. But despite this theoretical understanding, designing a stable ship, especially one as massive as an aircraft carrier, is far from simple. Numerous factors affect stability, including weight distribution, fuel consumption, and the arrangement of aircraft and equipment on board. If not managed correctly, stability could be compromised. And history is full of examples where stability issues led to disaster. For instance, on April 16, 2014, the South Korean ferry Suol capsized, killing more than 300 people, mostly schoolchildren. The main causes were overloading and improper cargo placement. During a turn, the ferry tilted, and the overloaded cargo caused a complete loss of stability, resulting in the tragic capsize. The USS Gerald R. Ford, like any aircraft carrier, is constantly managing weight shifts. The carrier houses 40 to 44 F-A-18E-F Super Hornet fighters, 5 to 7 EA-18G Growler Electronic Warfare Aircraft, 3 to 4 E2D advanced Hawkeye radar planes, 
two to three C-2A Greyhound transport planes and six to eight MH-60R Seahawk helicopters. These multi-ton aircraft are regularly transported from the hangar to the upper deck via massive elevators. Dynamic weight distribution can impact the carrier's stability. Furthermore, the ship constantly consumes fuel, which is stored in tanks located deep in the hull for protection. As fuel is depleted, the center of gravity rises and the ship's stability decreases. Rigorous testing. To ensure the ship can withstand various conditions, the USS Gerald R. Ford underwent shock trials in 2021. During these trials, massive underwater explosions, some up to 40,000 pounds, were detonated near the ship. The purpose was to see how the carrier would handle the vibrations and shock waves caused by nearby detonations, similar to what it might experience in combat. The tests proved that the ship could endure significant blasts without sustaining critical damage. Additionally, the carrier undergoes maneuverability tests, where it makes sharp turns at high speeds. Aircraft carriers, despite their enormous size, must be able to change direction quickly to avoid threats like torpedoes or missiles. Watching the USS Gerald R. Ford, a 100,000 ton ship, tilt 30 degrees during a sharp turn at 30 knots, 55 kilometers per h or 34 miles per hour, is a testament to its incredible design. Achieving stability. The stability of the USS Gerald R. Ford is maintained through several measures. First, the hull is specially designed to keep the center of gravity low and the center of buoyancy high. The bulbous bow at the front not only reduces water resistance but also enhances stability. Next, the ship has a ballast system, which helps balance the ship by pumping water in and out of tanks strategically located on the sides and keel of the ship. This system is automated but can be controlled manually for special operations, like preparing for a sharp turn. Modern aircraft carriers also have active stabilizers, which are movable blades that help minimize rolling in rough seas. These stabilizers automatically adjust based on wave conditions, reducing both transverse and longitudinal rocking. However, even with all these systems, ships have been known to fail in extreme conditions. In December 1953, the USS Bennington was caught in a severe storm, damaging its deck and causing several unsecured aircraft to be washed overboard. Similarly, the USS Enterprise encountered a storm in 1969, which led to significant damage to its deck equipment and aircraft. More recently, in 2022, the USS Gerald R. Ford experienced an extreme sea roll during a training exercise. A massive wave caused significant tilting, but the carrier's structure held firm and there was no damage to the aircraft. Surviving enemy strikes aircraft carriers are not only vulnerable to natural forces, but also to enemy weapons. In the past, a coordinated attack by Soviet supersonic bombers was considered necessary to take down an American carrier. It would have required dozens of bombers and cruise missiles with an expected loss of up to 50% of the attacking force. However, with the advent of hypersonic weapons, such as Russia's Zircon missile and China's DF-17, the threat has increased. Fewer missiles are needed to penetrate the carrier's defenses, making survivability a bigger challenge. In the face of these threats, the USS Gerald R. Ford relies on a layered missile defense system, including the Aegis Combat System, CIWs, and FA-18 Super Hornets for interception. If a missile does hit, the carrier is designed with watertight compartments that can be sealed off to prevent flooding and maintain stability. In conclusion, while the USS Gerald R. Ford faces both natural and man-made threats, its advanced design, stability systems, and defensive measures ensure that it remains one of the most formidable ships on the seas. Whether facing a storm or a missile strike, this modern marvel of engineering is built to endure.